Color of the Year, Do-It-Yourself Cameras, Magnum Streetwise, and Just Log It. This week on Take's Take. Thanks so much for tuning in for another episode of Photography Radio. My name is Tomasz and today you are listening to Take's Take with Take Kayo where he covers what's new and interesting in the world of photography, including digital, analog, mobile, and everything in between. Enjoy. Can you imagine your life without photography? No? Then you will love this show. And it doesn't matter if you're a DSLR, a mirrorless, or a mobile phone shooter. We're here to help your photography grow. This is Photography Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Take's Take, which is my take on photography news this week. So let's begin now. Pantone Color of the Year. For those of us from the graphics, printing, design, and even the fashion industry, we're aware of Pantone, the authority in color. With their standardized color matching system, using their proprietary Pantone numbering and naming system for identifying specific colors for use in print and production. Now, every year since 2000, they've chosen color of the year. And according to Pantone, these colors have influenced product development and purchasing decisions in various industries from fashion, home furnishings, industrial design, graphic design, and product packaging. Well, how do they pick color of the year? Well, they say that their color experts at the Pantone Color Institute, they search the world over looking for color influences in the entertainment industry, film production, traveling art collections, new artists, fashion, all areas of design, as well as influences stemming from new technologies, materials, textures, and effects that impact color, relevant social media platforms, social events, or anything that captures worldwide attention. Now, that's pretty much a very wide field of influence. So what is the color of the year for 2020? It is classic blue, or according to the number system, it is number 19-4052. Now, this is a quote from the Pantone Executive Director, Leatrice Eisman, concerning the selection of classic blue. She says, we are living in a time that requires trust and faith. It is this kind of constancy and confidence that is expressed by Pantone 194052 Classic Blue, a solid and dependable blue hue we can always rely on. Now, Pantone describes Classic Blue this way. It says, instilling calm, confidence, and connection, this enduring blue hue highlights our desire for a dependable and stable foundation on which to build as we cross a threshold into a new era. As a side note, Pantone's inaugural color of the year back in 2000 was cerulean. And it's kind of a type of blue as well. And last year's choice was living coral, which is an orangey pink color. You could tell I'm not that great with naming colors. And the year before that, in 2018, the color of the year was ultraviolet, which is a sort of purple. So as photographers, as we photograph the world that is around us, let's see if we can see how Pantone's color of the year, classic blue, can affect what we photograph this year in 2020. Do you want to build your own camera? Well, in the world of analog photography, it seems that everyone wants to build their own camera, and it makes sense. A film camera is basically a light tight box, and really it's the lens and the film that does most of the work. So in the modern age of computer-aided design and 3D printing, it wouldn't be that difficult to build our own cameras. In analog news, there's been a wide range of simple camera designs that have been coming out over the years. For instance, the solar can, which is basically a soda can with photographic paper installed inside with a pinhole lens that can be uh, used to photograph the movement of the sun up to six months long exposures. And you can type in solar can on Twitter and you see a lot of amazing photographs taken with this very simple design. Another cool project is by Camera Dactyl. 
A project initially started by making 3D printed hand grips for rare cameras, but eventually started building functional medium format and large format cameras. And they even started a Kickstarter project for funding further research for 3D printed camera plans because these things do take time to design and plan out. There's even a bunch of wooden cameras out there. One famous one that's a 6x17, sort of like the uh, Fujifilm weird panorama camera that took uh, medium format uh, film and took wide angle, large format size images. And again, they're using existing uh, photographic lenses and films, but just creating the housing for it. Well, there's a new project in town, and it is called Bertha. Now, it's being built by a group called Branco Itaco. I hope that's how it's pronounced. And it's an Italian photographic experimentation group. And you can look them up on, uh, on uh, I would say, YouTube. They do have a YouTube video, but as well on their website called Branco Itaco. Now, Bertha is a large, a very large format camera. And their goal with Bertha is to be able to create the world's largest slide image ever, by using a mixture of uh, photographic products that they've even invented, some of the chemistry, and being able to create it into, convert it into a positive image. The sum of Bertha's specs, it has the ability to make up to a 1.1 meter square or 3.6 uh, 3 foot square image. And now that's more than 10,000 square centimeters of image area. And for comparison, a full frame camera has 8.64 square centimeters of image error. So this is a very large, large, high resolution image. The bellows can move outwards to four meters or 13 feet with a 1000 millimeter F6.3 lens. And so such a large, um, uh, image area, a uh, 6.3 is actually a very, very shallow depth of field with a 1000 millimeter lens. And this, uh, with this bellows all the way out, it can create a uh, three to one macro image, which means that you can see three times larger than real life. And this only has a depth of field when completely stopped down to four centimeters. So accurate focusing is something that they're trying to, uh, focus on to, to make sure that they can get, uh, these portraits, which th what they plan to do, uh, with Bertha. To develop this image, uh, they have to use either photographic paper or black and white film, which uh, they uh, have their own uh, uh, chemical process for. And these uh, paper and film has to be one meter wide. And so for testing, you can see on their website, they use smaller sheets, looks like uh, eight by 10 paper and kind of paste it all together. But their goal is to use a single sheet and use their own unique chemical process inversion kit, which will positively reverse uh, their photographic paper or black and white film into a positive slide. They've even built their own mobile lab to process these images and to, uh, they plan to take Bertha and this mobile lab on the road to further develop this project while taking portraits, these three to one macro portraits of people while traveling. So can you imagine projecting a one meter square or 10,000 square centimeter image onto a wall or even looking at it up close? Well, as a film photographer myself, I'm very excited seeing what this uh, community of uh, do-it-yourself, building their cameras community, what they're able to produce with existing technologies, as, as well as existing chemical process, as well as creative chemical processes. Uh, much of it being hundreds of years old, uh, some of these technologies, as well as some of these lenses, everything from the solar can to wooden or 3D printed cameras to Big Bertha or Bertha. So I hopefully will see uh, one day. I hope to see this humongous uh, slide image in person myself. A brand new photo book by Magnum Photos. Magnum Photos has a new photo book called Streetwise. Curated by photographer Stephen McLaren, this book contains 300 images from within the Magnum catalog spanning from the 1940s right up to the present day, including images from some of the Magnum classics, Elliot Erwitt, uh, Martin Frank, Bruce Gilden, Steve McCurry, etc. In an interview, McLaren said, Street photography is still the lifeblood of Magnum. The book is an homage to the people that made it so. 
30 photographers have their own dedicated chapter, including highlights from their portfolio with quotes or essays, and 30 more are curate, uh, curated under specific sections titled In Transit, Days Off, and Playing the Market. Now, these are great titles. For those who are new to photography, this would be a very good book to start with as it really spans the history of Magnum, which coincides with the modern history of street photography and some of the greats, including Henri Cartier-Bresson, Martin Parr, and Richard Cavallar are part of this Magnum photographic history and part of this book as well. So Magnum Streetwise, available at all major bookstores as well as Amazon.com. My pick for Photographer of the Week is actually the editor and curator of Magnum Streetwise, which is Stephen McLaren. Originally from Scotland, Stephen McLaren is a photographer, writer, and curator, and he is currently based in the United States. Before Magnum Streetwise, he also co-authored another photo book called Street Photography Now back in 2010. Just as street photography was exploding on the world scene, coinciding with the rise of smartphones, Instagram, as well as a renewed interest in film photography from young photographers. Although a curator, McLaren himself is an accomplished photographer with his previous line of work as a TV producer and director for documentaries in the UK. His work has appeared in all the major publications from The Guardian, New York Times, and The New Yorker, and has also taught photography at The Guardian newspaper and other well-known institutions. As insight to his photographic approach, he said that he tends to invite himself into spaces, pretty much anything with a door, he said, pretending to be a tourist and bumbling in uninvited to events and functions. Now, that's a good tip. He also says that he has a mental catalog of moments, even if he doesn't get the shot. And that's a really good point. McLaren says in a quote, typically, I find if something happened and I've missed it, I kind of log it and think that there's a good chance it's going to happen again. There's nothing worse than beating yourself up about missed photographs. It's a waste of energy. Thanks for your sage advice, sir. To check out Stephen's work, go to his website at stephenmclaren.co.uk. That's Stephen spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N, McLaren, M-C-L-A-R-E-N, dot C-O, dot U-K. So thanks for joining me for episode number one for 2020 of Taka's Take, which is my take on photography news this week. Don't forget to subscribe to Photography Radio Podcasts for weekly uh, micro-episodes for your listening pleasure. Don't forget to tell your friends, and we'll talk to you again next week. Happy shooting. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hit subscribe on your podcast app. It would mean a lot for us to have you as our regular listener. Head over to photographyradio.com to drop your suggestion for future editions of Photography Radio or simply to say hello. We would absolutely love to hear from you. In the meantime, have a wonderful light and we will be back with more photography in your ears very soon.